Hello, I'm Seamless, and today it's time for a new FL Basics tutorial. And today I'm going to talk to you about data folders. Data folders is located up in here in the project general settings place. Up here where it says data folder, click on this button and it'll ask you to put it somewhere. Just for fun, let's put it in the project folder, make new folder, call it. And it'll ask you to save the current project in the folder. I recommend what we're doing right now, doing this before you actually do anything in the project. So let's call this something nice. So now we have a project in the folder, which is located in here. Could have sworn I deleted those two. Those were the previous attempts. There they are. Ah, cool. Refreshing the thing works. Anyway, the value of having a data folder is that whenever you create data, like say, if I were to engage Edison, name it something. Oh. And then, you know, record some stuff, some stuff, some stuff, some stuff. And then click and drag. The file will automatically be saved in the data folder along with the project. So that everything, everything that's like in the project or for the project will be in its own folder. It's kind of like a live zip folder with the exception of things like samples or whatever that you already have located somewhere else. This is, this will be sort of all, all the, the user generated stuff, even in the disc recording, if you right click this, just tell it where to go, it's already going to save inside of that, the data folder. Just to keep everything organized and already in one place is pretty good, because otherwise it would go to the general folders, like the recorded folder and the slice speeds folder, which as you can see are just a huge mess of randomness because I don't really do this very often because I forget that you can. And uh, the same thing with naming my files in Edison, which would, is something that I should be doing before anything else. And these are, these are some things that can help in the long term, because this is all really, it's about the long term. It's not just about the individual project, you know, organization, which is nice, but uh, what ends up happening if you don't do this kind of stuff is that all the various files and data and, and stuff ends up in the general pool of folders. And then when you want to open your project, they have to come from that path. And it gets to be a bit weird. The data folder helps. It makes that stuff work out a lot simpler and much more so, you know, organized. And if you name the folders actually something reasonable, then you'll have everything already there. And if you have to move some stuff, if you have to move projects, you can just move them and it'll work. It'll be great. Like I said, it's kind of like the zip folder live kind of thing. And if you are using, you know, samples, because right now I'm, you know, I'm just using these guys in the, in the project, which are uh, based on and uh, based in the already like the, like the PAX drums library kind of thing. That's where, that's where this guy lives. I think it's where he lives. Yeah. Oh, there's a dance. He's actually in the legacy folder. Um, and if I wanted these to actually be in the file, I'd have to save it as a zip. And then I guess maybe if I extracted the zip into the data folder, into the data folder, and then open the file, open the file, it, it would actually find them there too. So if you had to like keep it all in, in its own universe without assuming that eventually you'd move it into the new FL, then you can do that too. But for the most part, the data folder is most useful for recorded data which is valuable. It's super good for stuff like resampling because when you generate all kinds of, uh, of you know, files, you just know where they are and they're there and they're good. I'll buy them automatically. Anyway, short and sweet. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and all that good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.